to Shan Landon Regali, Little Flower from Houston, Texas, coming at you in the great state of Washington in Linwood, um, at the Veterans Memorial Plaza, of which I'm parked right over there. You can see me from the plaza. The library's down over there. But uh, I apologize for my live streams getting cut off earlier. My battery of my phone had uh, went kaput. But, um, my point of this video today, right now, is to uh, talk about my disposition. My disposition as a um, heavily targeted individual, my disposition of my situation being blacklisted from employment and having this uh, insane clown posse blow up my air with all this cockaphony, with all of this gang stalking, and all of this blacklisting from employment. My last two official jobs as a paramedic on city ambulance, I was gang stalked there. And then when I was employed in the ER as an ER technician, at Medical Center Denton, I picked up staff work through Maxim Staffing Agency. During my tenure there, I was gang stalked there on the clock and had a physician and ER nurses punk my ass there. So, work mobbed me there. My point being, if I get a job, that's an opportunity for them to hem me up some way. So, I'm just surviving over here. But uh, my truck, my truck compartment of the engine had been breached about a week ago by some gang stalker. Obviously, who else does it? And now my car kind of dead in the water without power steering. Whatever. So, you know, how is anybody supposed to survive whenever this government program has slanted the odds and orchestrated your life with their government grubbing handout recipient subculture, government grubbing by lying, cheating, and stealing against a targeted individual. How are you supposed to survive? I'm trying to come up with ways. I had, uh, I've been um, procuring equipment during my uh, job as a um, paramedic so I can go into um, journalism. Um, I had uh, I've had to pawn those, that equipment. I no longer have my iPad. I had to pawn that to stay afloat. I had a um, DJ. Because I was going to, I was going to do, uh, try to learn how to DJ for my, go into business for myself. My uh, controller I had to pawn. Don't no longer have. And then I even had media equipment to use during my live streams. I had very nice equipment so I could go into business for myself. I had to pawn it because of the government program and I no longer have that equipment. And as it is, I have storage that's out of balance that I stand to lose. Meanwhile, all these government grubbers and all of these corrupt judicial, corrupt law enforcement know my situation and how inconvenient it must be that I just won't die already. Isn't that right, Barbara Regali? Isn't that right, Paul Regali? Isn't that right, Tim Regali? And I bet it's a put out for you too, Marcella Kamiski, Monica Regali, Brian Rice. You know, all the people 
You all pulled in together to run your psychotic game on me. I'm still alive, bitches. And anybody having the evidence, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for your Christmas? When are you going to pop up with the evidence? CIA, FBI, DEA, whoever's out there, CSI. <laughs> what are you waiting for? You have the evidence that I'm being gang stalked. You have that. Are you just going to sit on it until I die? Until they kill me? Because the other part of this is the government experimentation they allow on the citizens. So they throw things in my path to study me to see how I react. They're surprised I'm alive. They're surprised I, I wasn't supposed to survive any of it. I was supposed to have killed over a long time ago, either through spell work or, you know, their orchestration of murdering me. I rented a room from this guy over in Bothell. He, he had his uh, homicidal ide ideations about me right in front of me. Turned out the guy I rented the room from in his household was a goddamn gang stalker. When I figured that out, I hightailed out of there, stopped sleeping there. And that's when I started living out of my car. And then I broke my foot and lost my job at the casino as a cocktail waitress. And they wouldn't hire me back. You know, gang stalked and everything because there's so many constituents with their dick in the fucking pile getting their grub on. Never mind the people being mowed down in the fucking program. So now that my car is kind of like dead in the water, this is what's going to happen. When they come to fuck with me, I'm just going to record it. What can I do? I'm, I, I mean, seriously. What can I do? I mean, I'll step aside. I'll let them tow it. What can I do? This is where the rubber meets the pavement. This is where my situation, this is not unique. This has happened to many other gang stalk victims. This gang stalking has been so successful for the past 25 years, most people don't know about it. That's how successful it is. Because whenever you're getting your government grift on, you've got a good thing going there. And now you've been bred to be a government handout recipient through the government grifting program by lying, cheating, stealing, trafficking people, trafficking people, and children, and the corner staple of this government gang stalking, which is a ruse in of itself, because the real issue is it's a fucking satanic sacrifice circuit. Let that sink in for a while. Most of your people who participate in it are fucking satanic worshipers. Y'all haven't heard me talk about that much, have you? I mean, I mean I've mentioned it in passing, but how do you think they proliferate their dastardly deeds with unethical practices? Because most of them are satanic worshiping witches and warlocks. Let that sink in. So when you consider your corruption of judicial and your corruption of the law enforcement, you have to question yourself. Which ones are the goddamn child molesters? Because the corner staple of their satanic practices is child molestation. Let that sink in. So, back to my situation. That was behind the scenes of what's going on with the gang stalking. When they come to fuck with me about my truck, 
I just have to let them fucking do what they can, what they want with it. I'll, I will be uh, honestly. I'll be polite about it. These people. I mean, what can I do? They're trying to get the government grift on. I'm sure. Towing my truck. Whoever gets to do that gets a hefty, lofty pay dirt, and their fucking paycheck. Especially if it's a cop, because they have to protect the cesspool. They have to keep pretending. Gang stalking. What's that? Oh my god. That is like a deliberate fuck you to the community. So my situation, having been run out of a career, having been run out of where I lived, usurped me from my children. I love my kids. I was captain of my own ship. As a, you know, as a newly uh, divorcee, raising my kids in my own home, and then pandemic happened, everything went to hell in the handbasket. But now I see the orchestration that brought. Hello, Don Barber. Uh, Don Renee Barber. I know you fucked me. I know you're part of this, sweetheart. I was nothing but kind and uplifting to you. She's my single white female friend back in Houston who double stabbed me in the back. Oh, she's crazy. She's really crazy. I mean, who stabs a friend in the back that was there to mentor them, to help them, to support them? Oh, that was Don Renee Barber. She's a goddamn snake. She's a part of the Regali clan with their fucking Rico business. Anyways, my situation is not unique. Uh, many targeted individuals already committed suicide, getting to my point. Having been lied on, and then they, uh, these people poison your inner circle by approaching them behind your back. And then, you know what, I looked at it like this. If you were part of my inner circle, and you bought into it, you, the trash took itself out of my life. Because... What idiot buys into gossip without even talking to the person? If you are involved in gossip and you believed that shit and allowed somebody else to fill your head with their garbage, what does that say about you? The first thing should be, dude, life is rough enough. Why are you dissing on somebody? Keep that shit to yourself. Uh, how many times have you heard that in a response? Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to have that be your corner staple of how you, of how people should, uh, and I mean you in particular, I mean you in general, should handle gossip. Because this gossip of this uh, gang stalking machine, this malign maliciousness is meant, is meant to cause harm to the individual. So I'm not the first person in this position. I just happen to have been the most articulated and the most healed in this position. So I have a red wagon. I love this red wagon. I used to use that red wagon for my children whenever I had them in extracurricular activities such as soccer, softball, baseball. I'd even coach my child's soccer team once. That was rough for me. I wanted to do it and it was scary as fuck and I did it. My point being, I'm a very well grounded citizen of the community that's upright and ethical. And all these unethical bastards are trying to fucking get rich off of coming at the public sideways through being unethical, through hoeing out their liberties, through allowing themselves to be compensated to hoe out liberties good people died for. This is nothing more than a treason circuit underground railroad to cause people to commit suicide. So it's a community psychosis. So I have a red wagon, I have a cloak, and I guess I'll just tow my red wagon around. 
I have a little four foot by four foot uh, pop-up tent that I was going to use as a uh, more like what man when I had all of my equipment oh yeah and I had to pawn my fucking camera my professional cameras that I was going to use to go into business with I had to pawn that but anyways, I got the gazebo tent to uh, use to change for like whenever I went to go on scene and do uh, on location filming for my flow photography, the fire spinning and such, then I had a place to change into, you know? As it turns out, I just might have to live out of that bitch. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I'm so happy to have it then. I'm very thankful to have it. Because no matter what these people throw at me, I will always rise up and meet my, meet my morning with joy. Meet my next day with excitement and happiness. You know, because at this point, what else can they take from me? They already took all of my pictures. Everything that I, they had railroaded me out of, I no longer have. And it's okay. I've already done a shout out telling the community I had evidence in my possession whenever that ministry, homeless ministry, tried to give me food that was poisoned. I can fucking taste it. Nobody came to help me with that. It just sat and rotted. What am I going to do? Take it to a police department that's already gaslighting the community at large to protect the cesspool, to protect the fentanyl into the goddamn fucking U.S.? All that money misappropriated into the gang stalking could have been used to help protect children. Children are being exploited in the satanic sexual practices as a corner staple within the satanic worshiping that this gang stalking is a part of. So, whenever they come, I got, I, I got a, I have a red wagon, I have an EBT card, my laptop, and I'll just pull that around. You know? I, I, I can't do anything else. I have, I have pleaded for judicial to be human and help me out. And here's the kicker. I have reason to believe I have an inheritance that somebody had donated to me when I had left Texas. And if that's true, then there's judicial out there that know I have money and allow me to stay in this position. I don't know who to go. Uh, you know what? I could hold somebody's hand. You needed a uh, a coronary artery bypass graft, open heart surgery, and you're in a little hospital and they don't have the cath lab or the capacity to bring that life inter saving intervention to you and you got to be hauled elsewhere, flown out somewhere. I could handle that. I could guide anybody through that. I could treat you, make sure you get there safely through that. I'm a whiz in the medical world. And I'm also ethical. You're, as far as anything judicial, I'm a fish out of water. So, if I do have all, if I do have an inheritance out there, by the time, if I lose everything and then I do get in touch with that, I'm going to have to find out what judicial knew and how come they didn't make it a special priority to come get my ass, to come tell me let alone come get the sandwiches that were poisoned when I had evidence. I don't know what to do. I cannot do nothing except make my videos and hope there's an ethical judicial out there that would intercede on the behalf of an innocent woman. And the reason why I have issue with uh, the FBI CIA, whoever, is that, you know, this is so competent oriented. It's like, you know, 
the uh, the feds they're known for psychological profiling, right? Psychological profiling. If they're so fucking smart, why do they keep the targeted individuals in the trenches? Because psychologically they're saying we're incompetent. Psychologically they're saying drive-by shootings don't happen. Psychologically they're saying fuck you. We're going to keep you right where you are. Is it because I'm a woman? Is it because my teeth make me look like a drug addict when I'm not? What about the mind? Oh, it's because I'm a minority. It's because I'm what? Native Indian? Take your pick. Irish? I'm always a quarter Irish. I'm half Philippine. Quarter North American Chippewa Indian. And, you know, incidentally, <laughs> I could, you know what, I could more than likely get a job, get my cocktail job back at the casino because if, if I were able to get my, if I had funds to actually get my tribal card from Canada, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. I have that capacity. They would approve me because I qualify. And then the reciprocity here in Tulalip would more than likely uh, acquiesce from the gang stalking and blacklisting. You know, I could actually be employed, but you know, I don't have the funds. Anyhow, this is where the rubber meets pavement for me. So, I mean, I sat and I thought about it yesterday. <laughs> I'm all like, well, what's the worst that can happen? They tow my truck, then what? I'm on foot, that's fine. I'll pick out my clothes, put it in my little red wagon, <laughs> and my four by four gazebo tent and use that for shelter and look around places within walking distance so I can come back to the library and hopefully fix my laptop, you know? But, um, you know, uh, I know that God has got me. You know, I don't care what happens to me. I, f I honestly feel like Job. Everything that the enemy kept throwing at Job, Job is like, it's cool, it's cool. I feel that way. It's cool. But, you know, I honestly feel like helping me. You know, this is from the gang stalker point. I'm not talking about the rest of the uh, civilians that understand and, you know, um, lack the fundage to help me. I'm not talking about you guys, okay? I love you. You're the, you are the constituents that help keep me alive just by watching my videos. Thank you. That's more than plenty of help right there. But I'm looking at the gang stalkers. I'm looking at the organ traffickers the human traffickers, and then all of the people that know about the gang stalking and do nothing. What you do to help me, you do to help yourself, but you also help thwart gang stalking from burgeoning from where it is already at. Because no matter where I end up in life, it's going to be my life's work to help eradicate and abolish gang stalking for good. Because there are many people out there and children that do not have the articulation of mind to break down what is happening to them, especially if it's for the first time ever. It's hard to consider the fact that this is a, a little militia in of itself, but it's not, so, it's not so little. So let me ask you this, guys. I don't know uh, much by way of like uh, legal stuff and whatnot, but uh, what happens to our country if uh, uh, there's a term for it um, when it becomes a there's a word for it? And oh my God, what happens if the power goes to the people? Is what I'm trying to say, or um, militia has to come in. 
I gotta find the term of that. Um, I, I, I apologize. <laughs> but uh, my point being is that um, the government has sanctioned a lot of gang stalkers, which are criminals. So you have a lot of criminals getting away with the crimes because they're doing the gang stalking and the uh, destroying of lives and the slander and the gossip. You know, all you got to do is slap a scarlet letter on somebody and they're good to go. Go ahead, gang stalk them. We came up with the ideas of what's going on. And so that's pretty much where we are at as a society. So now I'm like, okay, whenever, and th that's my plan. I'm like, you know what? I can't help whatever the government does and doesn't do. I cannot help what the treason citizens treason or not but I can I, do, this guy sees me talking to my camera and he's all pissed off I'm not talking to him whatever that's gang stalker for you chill let's break it up so I'm not out there teaching what's happening to me so but at any rate lost my train of thought he did good motherfuckers what happens Whenever the country's over bridled with gang stalkers. And they just keep proliferating. Funny thing is, is that a lot of them are satanic practicing Luciferians or whoever. Not to give Luciferian a bad rap, but, you know, or whatever. Because there's the worthy kind and I guess the unsavory kind. But I'm talking about the satanic practicing kind. That's who most of your gang stalkers are, huh? And for the gang stalkers that don't realize that, bitch, you better get out because they done sacrificed you on the down low. I mean, all these people turn on each other. So, whenever Popo decides to come harass me, you know what, police department, protect me, please. Protect me. Just don't harass me. Help me. Help me help you. Because you guys are protecting the cesspool of gang stalking. Why don't you have the one person that would love to give you a hand and help abolish gang stalking? You should be protecting me. But that's just my point. I'm in a place where nobody will want to be, which is kind of dead in the water because of the gang stalking, because of the glorified witch hunt that it is. In this day and age, it's a middle, medieval as fuck witch hunt. It's, it's, it's antagonism, it's racism, it's hate crimes. This is your Nazi Germany. This is your Nazi Nazi bitches. These are fucking little Hitlers. Little Hitlers, they're all narcissists. Cause who else would run over the public sideways? I've met some really nice ones, and I say nice because they, when I, when I pointed it out to them, you could see the guilt, and seeing guilt is a good thing. That tells me their conscience is like, hey, stop it, and that's where I come in. I'm like, you can do it. You can hit reset. Those are my favorite, because while I'm in the trenches, I'm here to help bring light to the gang stalkers. But I have a red wagon. And you know, my point being is that I'll make it work. I will make it work. So I sat and I thought about what would I do? You know, and I'm like, well, I see all these other homeless people. While I am in the trenches, you better believe I minister to the other homeless. Because what good is anybody if they just meet hate with hate? Love the sinner, hate the sin. And I realize not everybody can be reformed from it. That's fine. I leave that to karma, you know? Whatever. But uh, as it is, I'm really put out with the feds, FBI, CIA, private investigators, whoever. You guys, have it. you guys have the evidence that I'm being fucking gang stalked, but yet here I am and nobody has come to bridge the ambiguity with truth. 
And if there is an inheritance I do have out there, oh man, you guys are going to get it. That allow me to stay out here and not come rescue me already with what is mine to begin with. So, but um, thank you for listening. I'm at Veterans Memorial Plaza over here. You can see that. And then there's my truck over there. You know, so as far as I as far as I see it, this park this side of the parking lot belongs to the goddamn park. And then the police officer told me the library was concerned about me camping over here. People, if you're concerned about me, you can y'all I bet I am like the most goddamn popular motherfucking targeted individual throughout the motherfucking country. Throughout the country. So if you're a gang stalker, you fucking know who Little Flower is. And you, Linwood Library, you have a presence of gang stalkers in there. Instead of making me the bad guy, why don't you abolish the gang stalking presence? Unless, of course, you're getting your little palms greased by being a government handout recipient to keep your mouth shut, keep you fat and happy, as long as you railroad your goddamn targets who come in there. Mm. So, protect me. Don't call, don't call, um, don't slander me with bare false witness. Protect me. Police officers, protect me. Help me. Leave me be. But at any rate, thank you so much for listening. I know my videos get kind of long, but I'm going to be doing more lives because... I'm very anal retentive and very, I have a perfectionist personality. If I try to do a video and make it perfect and polished, it'll never get uploaded. But as it is, I feel a pressing sense of urgency to get my story out. Because time is of the essence. And I have a lot more to talk about, to share about the gang stalking. But uh, thank you very much for listening. And uh, for all the hate crime constituents, Thank you very much for listening. And if you had uh, hurled insults in my comments, thank you for showing us who the fucktards of gang stalking are and who the moral decrepit of the nation is so other families know to stay away from you and not affect their bloodline with lies, thieves, and cheats. To not infect their bloodline with parasitic bloodlines. That's important. Oh yeah. And plus you give up your IP address. Thank you very much. I love you. So, but uh, I'll be back. Th and thank you very much for watching and for listening. My subscribers is the blood in my veins and in my aura. Thank you.